So, I've done a bunch of F1 videos leading up to one of the strangest F1 years of all times. We lost many people, including the iconic Bruce McLaren in this very year, 1970. We also had the second and the final championship po po posthumously awarded to somebody ever. Meaning, he'd managed to dominate so hard and not compete in the final four races and still win. It was in this car, the Lotus 72. The car to bring the defining shape to all future F1 cars. It has the side pods. It has the overhead scoop. It has the wing hanging over the rear main compartments of the body. To start making this off though, I'm going to go steal myself a picture. Yoink! And into Blender now. First, we're gonna go side view. We're gonna go ahead and add ourselves an image. Now, what is the length here? 2.546 meters. So we're gonna make this cube 2.546 six meters now what we do is we grab this and we scale it up so then hopefully you can have both center axles of the wheels be just in the right place in the center of that wheel and hopefully close enough to the center of that wheel get that lined up about there look at that also this is a separate engine stress component sort of thing so we're not going to be having a body behind here so let's go ahead and move that into place now we're going to drag this out in sections so then we have what we need and we're going to bring that here going to bring that down if you have a look here the main part of the body is most Mostly flat, and then it's as if this is added on top. So I think we're gonna drop these all down. GZ, 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 and GZ. And we'll just keep going for the rest of the car. And if we need to do loop cuts later, that is entirely fine. There, that's the main part of the body. As you can tell, a little bit wide. We're gonna duplicate this and then rotate it. Now we're going to narrow this up a bit and we're going to make our X dimension zero. Now from the top, we're gonna do the pods separately as well. See, they're not entirely a part of the body, but they're pretty darn close, but I think it's gonna be better if we model them separately and attach them. And I think the body line comes out about here. It's, it's not the greatest picture, but it will do. So, there's basically our vehicle. It's done, right? Yep. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these. We're going to subdivide. Then select all of these and lift them. And we're getting close. Subdivide. Select these again and lift them again. Look at that. Getting really close. Look at that. We're almost done. Home stretch. That's how this works. That's most of it done. The only other thing I really need to do is some sort of scoop, but I'm not sure if I make that as a part here or as I make it a part of a fixture add-on. What I'm thinking, you know what actually I'll do is I'll make it a part of like a different color paint scheme and then you can remove it yourself if you want to. I do have a bit of a roll cage here as well, but then it changes. Sometimes it doesn't have the scoop on top. God damn it. They were evolving the design so much that nobody could decide how they wanted it to look. I mean, this one doesn't even have Nakaducks. It has like inverse things. Uh, what? Is it? Oh, well, I can't even tell what that is actually. Well, hmm. Yes, quite. Now, there has been an update, the new automation stuff, but go grab your startup blend file. I got mine from Hard Rooster Labs, and we're just gonna copy these two things, which is the bound boxes and the materials, and we're gonna control C this and paste it in. And immediately we have materials we could choose from. This will be new two for two tone. Oh, now it's painted everything. God damn it. We're going to get this one and we're gonna add a new one, and this one is going to be paint and a sign. There we go. Now we have a two-tone car. I think this is almost ready to go over. Except for the fact that we're going to probably paint this now a different color so then people can get rid of it if they want to. Even though this isn't just a general mod body, this is specifically for Formula One in the 70s. But I don't know why you're grabbing this one going like, oh, but I don't want it to look like one from the 70s. What, what, what's wrong with you? Why did you pick this body? I mean, I suppose it is technically over the engine, so we could make it the bonnet. So now that will be a different selectable 
You can make your own holes in automation for that. Anything you want to do, intricate detail here, you could do yourself. This is different on every different vehicle, so I will let you do your own there as well. It's a little bit of a slit vent in there, but you can do that. And same with the roll bar. I think we can figure that out in automation itself. I think what we are going to do, though, is we're going to select this face in here, and we're going to make this a bumper. That way, you can make that your own material if you want it to be your own, like, a uh, mesh thing in that. So you don't have to like mess around with, or should I say, mesh around with. <laughs> UV editing. Oh, that's bad. All right, let's go ahead and UV unwrap it. Oh, wait, you know what? This is actually a sphere, so it has to overlap itself. <sighs> yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. We're going to find a split seam right down the middle on the bottom. That'll make it the easiest. Now let's go ahead and UV unwrap. There you go. Okay, well, it's gone really well, except for this whole like rear thing. We're going to mark a seam along the backside of this there we go whoa look at that it's almost not terrible that's a actually a really good unwrap so i heard the bound boxes have changed but i don't know which one's changed and it doesn't hurt apparently to keep doing the bound boxes the way we've been doing it in the past so i'm going to do all of the bound boxing you fit a big beefy white engine in there now the only thing that we're going to do different from hard rooster labs if you go watch his video is we're now going to select both this and the bound boxes and then we're going to join them together f4 export fbx whoops polygons have more than four vertices select all of it Control t easy that is so so easy to do. When I found out how to do that, it was just life changing. Now open Epic Games Launcher. Great, because this is a games platform, they keep updating it. Now, because I want to make a mod, Epic Games is going to be a bit of a bitch. I don't care about you. Stop trying to give me things. I will never use your platform. So we're in here getting all of the details sorted. And we've made it up to tires. We've just got a default of 100, minimum size of 40, and default wheel diameter of that. But I don't know what the width of the tires are. So really, like, I've looked all over the place, and nobody has details on what size tires these things came with. Just so frustrating. It, it seems like it wouldn't be that hard of a thing to do. So instead, we're going to turn on these things again. And then we're going to try to figure out what out what this is measuring tool and 350s approximately so 350 will be the default tire width i don't know what sort of cd error we should use i'm assuming it's going to be pretty good let's go ahead and use the calculator that's handily been given to us splitter like front hmm one could say that the entire front is a splitter type thing Except it does go up a little bit, but I don't think that's going to affect us too much. So this is actually going to be quite high. We're going to put an 8 on that. How high is the car? We're not going to measure the airbox, but it is about 0.61. That should do pretty well. That's pretty low. 1970. Forced induction, not yet. Aero quality is going to be quite high, so we'll put a 10 on there. Frontal area. Uh, do they mean the entire vehicle? Because that's... Uh, really low. Half a square meter, maybe, maybe less. 0 0.5. Our front lift is really low. Our rear lift is quite high. And our drag says 3.5. Uh, you know what? Actually, we'll go with that drag. There's our car. Isn't it gorgeous? I think that looks about right. Not much left to do. We're going to go in. We're going to change a few last little details. And then we're going to have it over in automation. Oh. There she is. And I think my windows might be a bit balked. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. Whatever. There's also not the defined line that I would have liked. Maybe I can do something about that in the future. And I think I will actually do something about that. Because right now, it's not as defined as what it was on the original. I mean, look at that. You can tell that this has got a defined line. Also, I love this picture. That's a good picture. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this out of just really the lightest stuff possible. I believe it was still made of aluminium, but I'm not entirely sure. Bathtub style monocoque was made of sheet aluminium and had a subframe with a front suspension attached to the subframe and the engine and the... Okay, cool. Yeah. Aluminium, monocoque, no longer a space frame. The monocoque 
block is actually meant to be made of aluminium though, but we don't really have the choice here. Mid longitudinal, double wishbone approximately. I mean, there were never exactly double wishbones, but close enough. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clone a variant. And it's gonna be this one. Oh, here it says actually we got more power. Okay, so we can go more power. Also, our power band is 10,000 to 10,800. My God. Oh, we're gonna have to go over 10,000. Oh my God. You know what, screw it. We're gonna create a new DVF. Chill over cam, four valves for cylinder, aluminium. Quality all the way up because this needs to be a little bit lighter. Harmonic dampler. Uh, we're just gonna go lightweight forged and all that kind of garbage. And all the way up in quality. This is gonna have to be like the highest revving engine ever. Oh dear. And somehow we're gonna have to survive at like about 11-ish thousand RPM. This car is gonna jiggle so much. Oh, it's gonna be a nightmare. Tubular, dual, whatever that needs to be and done. Okay, we are creating way too much power. 346 kilowatts is how much power we need. We may be making a little bit more than what we need. Get rid of all that compression, please. There we go. We're almost at the power we need. We are really not using much octane at all. You know what? We can run this on cruddy old, hold on, unleaded 85. Usually, honestly, with these things, it is a struggle to get the power that we need. But now it's super, like, maybe a little too easy. And let's hear what the 1970s sound like. That sounds decent enough to me. Why is there a dip here? That is so weird. Oh, whatever, let's move on. Here's our new chassis. Our exhaust for some reason is all the way up there, but I suppose we'll figure something out about that. This looks super duper weird and jank. Is that window see-throughable? Ah, it is, good, okay. We're gonna leave that quite opaque though with like tint, because I feel that it was already quite dark to match the body color. Fixtures go ahead, we're gonna hide that chassis. Now we could make our own suspension as well since the suspension does not suit our needs. But we'll deal with that in a bit. Manual gearbox, five speed, whatever it is. They actually had a slightly different gear ratio which they just put in for the one guy because he felt that uh, the wing was creating too much drag and wasn't allowing him to have enough speed. So yeah, you can go whatever gearbox ratio you want, honestly. Uh, cross ply tires. We do start getting semi slicks, oh sorry, slicks I should say in the 70s, but I don't think we have them yet. We have semi slicks by Goodyear. Mm, in 1970, we were still using Firestone. So, it's still got a big tread pattern on it. And that is usually some kind of sports compound. Now, what tire size do we want? Our front tires are about 500s. So that is set correctly. About 650 to 660. So I think we're going to go with 665. So unfortunately, we can't get the width we want, which is a bit poopy bum holes. There are about 220s on the front, which we can get nowhere near, and about 350s in the rear. Once again, we can get nowhere near. I think if we drop that down to 200s, then go into here, we can go to our rear tires and add on here. And I don't know what unit this is, but it might be a one-to-one -one unit so like that's a millimeter each time maybe so we added uh, we added at 200 so we want to add 240 on that doesn't seem quite right let's have a look to see what it looks like see if it doesn't look too ridiculous hmm yeah me thinks that's like the width of the car yep that's that's definitely not right i do have one other option and that's to make the wheels much bigger and then shrink them down using this Actually, hold on. Let's do a little bit of a study now. I'm gonna turn the tie width back to zero. All right, this is how we do this. Let's get a cube in here. And then we're gonna stretch that just to be the width of the tire or the wheel or whatever. Put you there approximately to the middle. Then we'll put you there approximately into the middle. And then we're gonna go until this is double the width. So yeah, it's somewhere around 120 is an extra like doubling the width kind of area. It's close enough. Now we're gonna do the same to the front. <sighs> Let's go ahead and do this again, shall we? Yay! Let's do maths. I think I'd rather do maths. So if we wanna have a time width of approximately, that uh, looks like a wheel width of approximately 260. So we need one of these, two of these to be approximately butted up against each other. And then one more at 0.6 scale on the red axis. 2.39 times 
point six. Okay, one, four, three, four. Okay, and we go. <laughs> I don't like this. Why can't it just be simple? Ugh. And now, make it wide enough. Huh. I could have sworn that these front tires were a lot narrower. They look a lot narrower. Like, this one is nearly double the size. Yeah, look how narrow that is. Maybe it's because the front tires have a lot more stretch compared to the rear. Maybe that's what it is. Okay, let's put on tire stretch and bulge. A lot of stretch, please. A lot of bulge, please. Mmm, look at that bulge. Mmm, yeah. I think our tires now look tundilionskis. Brakes, uh, we're gonna go with solid discs. Now, we can't do exactly what the original people did, but they did have the brakes offset. Unfortunately, if we try to copy them, it's gonna end up looking really super jank. We're gonna go with no wonder tread because I want it to be lighter, and I don't really care too much about drag. Lightness is more important to me right now. Lots of brake airflow, because these are 13 inch wheels with the small ass brakes on it. One seater, basic, and nothing here obviously standard spring gas monotube and set it up for race apparently we have severe issues with wheel spin but that's gonna be balked because it doesn't actually know how wide our tires are so yeah for now you can go away it, uh, it has no idea it reckons our top speed is pretty high as well currently our gearbox will allow us to do about 104 kilometers an hour in first gear so i think maybe we might shorten that up just a smidge now we can do somewhere around around 78 kilometers an hour in first gear. But that's fine, let's go ahead and start painting this baby up. Let's start by choosing our paint color. So there's quite a few options. There's black and white, black and white, and black and gold? I think this is the one we're gonna go with though, because it is the most iconic paint scheme. The only other one being this one. That's pretty good. Let's start with the front wing, I think. I need more wing mods. Now, they do have little end winglet bit, uh, whatever you want to call it, so we're going to keep that. We are going to lose the little stands. We don't need them. And then, because they're only on either side, we're going to narrow them out and then put them out. There we go, on the side. This is a bit jank. Is the front offset too much? Yeah. It really feels like it. There looks a little bit more accurate than our chassis again, because for some reason that turned back on on its side. Now the front camber, I'm noticing it's quite aggressive here. If you have a look here, there's almost no camber whatsoever. So let's go ahead and remove all of that camber that we don't apparently need. Now because the rear tires are bigger than the front tires, it's given it a bit of a stoop. So we're gonna go into fixtures and once again, we're gonna go and we're gonna do some more editing of these things to be ways in which automation never attended things to be. And we're going to make our suspension a little bit lower on the rear. Boop, 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 boop. That looks about right. I like it. Next is we got some vents coming up this way, but I think we're going to switch that around to be instead knacker ducts, because I saw that on one of them. Oh no, the knacker ducts are lower, which aren't on this one at all. Why does this go so deep into the body? What the hell? I think we're going to have to make it three dimensional. No, we're going to create two of these. We're going to have this one, then we're going to shift and make a new one, and then make that one three dimensional. Now it melds at least a little bit of the body. I don't know, man. Yeah, whatever, nobody cares. They all seem to have a little bit of a ventilation in here, and I'm assuming that's for cabin cooling. Because one of the big innovations they did is they took the radiator from the front, which was how it was always, basically, and then they put it back here on the sides. How are we going to fit a vent in here, I think? Oh, that's working pretty well. It's very hollow in there. Can I make this super deep as well? I think it... Kind of works. Let's go ahead and make that invisible. Then instead, we're going to use some of these doodads. Make that stretchy downy and then stretchy inny and make that our mesh. They're done good enough. Because as we say here on Phil Incorporated, near enough is good enough. I'm seeing some discrepancy though. We have some like sort of mag wheel four spoke, I think on the front. Then the rear, we got like a drum style wheel that's completely sealed off. We could take two different models and then try to meld them together, but ah, it's too much work. I'm gonna just go with that. I am however going to make the wheel a little bit more concave. Oh, they've got concave actually working now. Perfecto mundo. Then we're gonna do that, but just a whole lot worse on the rear now. We really should lift the brakes from there and move them to the inside, like the actual real car, but I don't think I'm gonna do that because that is a lot of effort for not a lot of gain. Oh, hold on. Oh, that's perfect. Then rotate you 
Oh, yes! There we go. That's our little slit that I was looking for. Ah, <laughs> nice! Wait, hold on. That's not a vent. That's a lip of some sort. Maybe that's some sort of, like, arrow thing? Maybe there's something aerodynamically wrong with the body. Uh, let's get rid of that then. It looked a little bit like a lip like this. Yeah, that's about right. What is that? Why is it there? What the hell? It's got little bolts on the backside of it too. But we do have, luckily, near bolt-like fixture. Damn it! It's wrong orientation. All right, let's make you super duper small. Oh, great. We can count them. One, two, and then a middle one. So there's five all together. Awesome. <laughs> Lovely little detail that for no reason is there now. It, it's not going to do anything in PMNG. Let's go ahead and try putting some decals on then. That's looking pretty nice, actually. I like it. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't change the color of this number. But eh, it's good enough. This is coming together quite nicely. I am really enjoying this. This is the first like body to actually look like what we consider a modern F1 car. Okay, now the all these other labels I can't really put on here. So that's gonna have to be most of the labeling we do, unfortunately. We can't have a change the paint on the wheels. Here I'm seeing gold on the rim and black on the middle. Also, they are actually the same design of wheel, it's just the center seems very different because of uh, the wheel size. Wait, this cast iron is a mod? Ooh, interesting. I wonder, can we, yeah, we can change the colors. Okay. Get the feeling this is gonna look really shit though. So unfortunately we're gonna go with wrinkle paint. That looks like it'll have to do. Now they're not exactly the same wheels. Fortunately, I can't get exactly the same wheels and I'm not really into making the mods of the, these wheels because they're not particularly fantastic wheels, if I'm gonna be honest. Now the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move around the engine a little bit and maybe make it a smidge a bit bigger. Smidgey bit? Whatever. Engine scale, turn that up a smidge, then move it forwards. That's about right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The only thing we're gonna do is maybe, maybe, ever so slightly, maybe move where the exhaust is. Here we've just got two pipes coming right out there. Ooh, that looks actually pretty cool, if I'm honest. And then the really big wing, which is really hard to tell what kind of wing we're looking at here. Unfortunately, I don't think I have anything that fits this side profile. So we're gonna have to go with a pre-made wing. Do we have anything that fits that? Kind of this and maybe hide the parts we don't want? Um, eh, it's close enough. Now let's move it into place. As you can see, here it is way behind the rear wing. Mercedes style. Yeah, no, that's not actually how this guy died, but you, you get the idea. I think it's like back here somewhere. And there's like housing back here as well that I don't fully understand. So it comes into some sort of weird box. What is this box? What's in the box? I am so lost right now, I have no idea. Maybe it's some sort of like rear mounted oil cooler behind the engine for some reason? I think, I don't know man, I just, I'll stick a box back there. And now because this is black on black background, I can't see what I'm looking at. Well, this one has two boxes. What? And this has not enough stuff in the image. Okay. Um, eh, eh, it's good enough. Let's go ahead and make this box a little bit bigger, and then we're gonna stick a radiator of some sort on the back, I think. Let's hope that does the trick. <laughs> this is going to look super duper jank. I forgot to also make the interior a different color. Bugger, that's fine, we're gonna stick a seat in there anyway. Unfortunately, there's only really the one seat option. So let's go with my good old foam padding kind of thing that I use sometimes. Good, okay, that, that one that kinda works, yeah. You know, you'll, you'll still burn up, you'll still die. A horrible death. I wonder if that ever happened to anybody. I'm going to hell, aren't I? This apparently is the interior. So just a very small three spoke wheel and some three gauges. And you'll notice here a little fire extinguisher. This was a brand new thing. In the 70s, it was all about increasing safety. Yeah, that looks god awful. Why does it look so bad? Anyway, that will do. I forgot to do this back here. Front bumper. Now we have it so much easier. We could just go in. And in here somewhere, there is grill. Done! It's just, it's so easy now. God, they have made making stuff in this game so much better. I think we're basically done. Oh yeah, and also mirrors, obviously. I always forget the mirrors. Wait, it doesn't have a mirrors. They forgot them. Yes, I'm not the only one. <laughs> 
Oh, well, that one has them. Then that one does. Then that one does. All right, you know what? Screw you. Fine. You happy now? The roll hoop was the new big thing. It was meant to save people's lives. Didn't really save enough people's lives. Uh, okay, good enough. Oh, they have stripes on the um scoop thingy. Oh, well, I haven't done that. Also, my scoop thingy is very square. And then it's got the same thing basically down lower. This is pretty cool. I like this. This makes me happy. This is happy, Phil. <laughs> yes! Gotta call it something like the bloaters, because I haven't checked the weight. I just know that it's going to be too much. Yep, the weight is about 100 kilos too heavy. 539 kilos, which is about the limitation. We, on the other hand, are fat as boy! But I also love this. I love it so much. You guys really have to try out this body. Like, even if it's gonna suck immediately once we get it over to BeamNG, it's still going to be fun to work with. You know what I can do? Hold on, there is something ever so slightly that I can do. Yep! Just in case our good old friend takes a look at the car. Maybe he'll miss it and everyone else will see it and they'll be like, Hey, let's go look at Filman86 on YouTube! Much better. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's now into the monster track, which I am dodgily running, by the way. Oh, we're getting a bit of jitter for some reason. I'm not seeing any body wobble though, just a bit of weird jitteriness. I think that has to do with the fact that those uh, little decals are really small. Oh wow, I've got near no body shake from this. Yes, finally! All we had to do is just have a much more substantially chunky body and it's working wonderfully. Uh, okay, brakes are a problem. Breaks are a problem! Oh god! So yeah, as I was saying about this Monza map, now it's not the exact Monza map we're running because there are a few differences. Like it has three chicanes which are not in the version which they would have been using when this raced. But uh, unfortunately, like, it's so jank. If I bring back the UI, it's stuck in a perpetual loading screen like this. So I can't actually do that. What do we got for our collision mesh? Our collision mesh is actually rather not horrible. That is quite surprising. Like, there may be some tweaks that you want to do, but that actually looks pretty good. Yeah, this is fantastic. All we're going to do, though, is uh, maybe put in the same brake tuning options that we had in the previous car as well. God, this thing has so much wheel spin. It's crazy. There we go. A lot faster. Oh, fun to steer at high speeds. Now, that was actually a problem. They had problems with... um. The front tire is getting so little uh, work done with them. Oh, I lock up like an instant. Oh, god damn. The problem was is uh, they weren't getting heat into the front tires because they just were not getting worked enough and they would constantly be cold. So that is not unrealistic, but oh my god, maybe we... Whoa! Oh god. Understeer a little too much. Also, this wouldn't have actually had coil springs at all because this is one of the early cars to implement torsion beam suspension. Now, torsion beam is not particularly good. You don't see it on many cars at all. But for racing, when you're pushing cars to the absolute limit, it's actually pretty decent because it's very lightweight and allows you to move the weight very much inboard. Oh God, I can barely touch the brakes before the front tires lock up altogether. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. Oh, God. <sighs> anyway, this chicane wouldn't have been here anyway, so it would have all been about the high speeds. And they actually, I believe, removed the rear wing for the fatal accident of Hyoshin Rind. Like, you, you were a phenomenal racer, apparently. But my God, your name is atrocious, so... The new inboard brakes, so we're going to stop because we're getting really close to where the fatal incident happened. They had new inboard brakes, which meant that the front had an axle, which is not very normal for F1. But the brakes were inboard, and that's probably actually what these things were now that I think about it. And then they had an axle out, and one of them snapped. Now, that wasn't what killed him. Let's keep going. So he's coming in, and he starts braking, and around here, the person that was behind him said they distinctly remember them veering violently to the right. So, violently to the right. Well, we can't actually turn right. We don't have traction on the front. And then violently to the left. And then into the right again. 
which we absolutely missed our turn. And that sent him into the guardrails around here. Now, the guardrails would have been very different back in the day. But what happened was, is they believed it was faulty guardrailing, matched with the fact that, that these people were still very afraid of catching on fire. So what happened was, is he'd only done four points on his five-point harness. And he crashed into it so hard that he slid underneath. He was ripped underneath and it, it did some very gory stuff. It slid open his throat, which was the thing that finally killed him. So I'm sorry, even if like there's family members of this person out here, I'm sorry to make it so graphic. But this is how dangerous these cars were. They were pushing themselves to the absolute limit. These drivers knew that death was very possible and they still did it. And the winner, was the one that died on this very day. We, however, are going to try to give it a bit of a runaround. Uh, give me a moment. I'm going to go do some tweaking and put some uh, brake pressure sliders on. Now, here's a little bit of a tidbit of information. Remember how our wheels were about 400 and something wide? Well, if we were to export it, we would actually see what the real tire width is. And now we're seeing that it's 440. So what we can do is bring in our measuring tape. 345 looks about right. And if we go over to here, you'll just see that it's just straight up and down. Let's go in and make the tire width a different width. And voila, you know, it's a little bit hard to see. There you go. And voila, you can see now we have tire stretch. And this is physics based, so that will actually have an effect. A good effect? I don't know, but sure, okay. Now, because Monza, unfortunately, is just broken, probably not for just me. I have heard a lot of people have problems with it. We're going to go and we're going to go to the old automation test track for now. There we go. And it is quite slow off the line. I'm assuming, though, if you get a steering wheel out, you can... Oh, pull! That sucks. I'm assuming you can uh, ride the clutch a lot better. I, I only really have a binary clutch on my controller, which I'm using right now. And uh, we'll bring out the real... Oh, this is hard to drive. The real, um, thing for you citrus. <laughs> this is so hard to drive. So let's do our actual proper tuning that you usually do. <laughs> this is hard to control. Oh, those cross flies suck. And bring it down and brake. Our front brake force is now quite balanced. We did set a good default and there is the... Good old tuning. All right, so the thing just has no grip at low speed, and it's goddamn hard to drive right now. Okay, so the thing has lots of understeer, but also lots of oversteer. I think that might have been part of the thing that they were having with this body as to why they removed the wing, because they were starting to find that the downforce was not really helping them. I think it's because the cars were just maybe a little bit poorly made, honestly. So... Yeah, here we go. Into the big bolt. Damn it. Why don't we have traction on the front? What is going on? There is something severely wrong. We shouldn't be understeering that much. Understeering, sure, that's acceptable. But understeering the amount that we are right now, that's not great. Break it. Come down into the first... Oh, the, sorry, the final corner of this track. Nice and really slow. At least we're not getting snap oversteer or anything like that. That's actually doing pretty nice. I think I can actually put in a good time with this. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Please stop, please stop. <laughs> now, do I think this is going to be phenomenal? No. Do I think it's going to be good enough and fun to drive? Yeah. Especially considering that this thing jiggles nearly not at all. Oh my god, it is so hard to get off the line. And then, god damn, it's so bad at low speed. Is it because the tires are like way too narrow as opposed to just being a little too narrow? Is there something else going on? Because I feel like there's something else going on. Because it is super duper jank. But that's fine. We're going to push this thing quite hard and then slow down. Get that nose turned in. All right. You know what? Nah, this car is really super hard to drive. And let's slow it down. Get it turned in here. And turn around. Is it... I think it might be a downforce thing. Maybe we're just not generating enough downforce on the front. And to be honest, that is actually quite true. They would struggle to get downforce where they need it to be. Which is why soon we will actually be making ourselves the sucker. Or like the one that uh, has actual first ground effect. Now, ground effect isn't real, unfortunately, in this game. 
But we're going to do our best to try to replicate it. And there we go. Floor right down with a great DVF moto. One minute, 11 seconds. This car is atrocious. I reckon you could probably knock off somewhere like five to 10 seconds with a lot of practice with this car. Because currently, it's quite bad. Like that. I just went around a few more times and I was able to easily knock off about four seconds. But I do think this thing needs a lot more front traction. I'm not entirely sure how to go about doing that. Maybe more front wing angle? Editor Phil here. It seems that I seem to have lost a certain bit of footage here. I actually went over to Monaco and I went ahead and tried to set some laps. And then I said that I was going to go away and spend some time and practice on my own. You know, just imagine it. <sighs> all right. I just turned the recording on. I have spent all of the last of the day, all of this morning, trying to do this and, like, make the best time possible. This is my best F1 car I have ever made so far. And I am maxing out at two minutes and three seconds. Now, ignore the others. This is the only lap I've completed in the last, like, hour. Just trying to push this car to be faster. Like, even not pushing it is dangerous. Unfortunately, that only just puts us in third. It, it uh, just it ever so slightly puts itself in front of a car that doesn't even have downforce. How is this possible? Oh my god. Like, this one doesn't have downforce and it's faster. This one has rudimentary downforce and is so much faster. Ah. <sighs> Check this out. Taking off is hard. You have to really feather it and you really have to short shift. Otherwise, this thing will kill you. Then under braking, you have to heal into it. Otherwise, you'll go completely jank. The camera shakes a lot inside of here. So the body doesn't, but the camera sure does. And then you can floor it most of the way up here if you're really ballsy and then brake heel and toe, bring it in over the ridge. You have to brake way before the ridge because if you start braking at the ridge or after the ridge, you're going to die. And then slow down really for this corner. Otherwise, you'll just understeer horrifically out of there. You can't accelerate too fast down here. Then heel and toe into second, pulsing the brakes so then the brakes don't lock up because the car is completely unsettled in that part of the track. Actually, you know what? It's unsettled in most parts of the track here at Monaco. It is really on the drive. And then bring it down here. This one will always try to understeer you. This one I've gotten pretty decent at. And then a good exit out there. But you can't floor it because you will spin around. It is very much a point and squirt at this point. And then a little bit of a break. Get it turned. And oh, I didn't break soon enough. And then... You really should break later there, but if you do, you're just going to end up spinning around because you're in an unsettled state going down a hill and then you get caught out with a spin and then slow down. Now, this one, this corner sucks. I, I cannot find a way to take that corner fast. And then coming through around the swimming pool, can't floor it yet. Heel and toe. Oh, I didn't properly heel and toe there and just janked out and I'm getting frame lag now goddamn recording does make it a lot worse then coming around down here yeah, we're seconds away from not being able to take the fastest lap already and we're not even on the start finish line yet Whoa, okay that was a new one for me damn it right at the end that's fine we can nurse it along we can get it there but yeah I would have been over two minutes on this lap. <sighs> but I tell you what, with the controller, this car is entirely drivable and very pretty to look at. It is just, it's just a really, really good looking car. Like you can't look at that and think, eh. Like you look at that and you go, oh, that looks special. Now, because this is probably a much better controller car than a first person steering wheel car, you can go ahead and just completely ignore, well, that crash, but also all of the effort I went into here to put in brake force again, to put in the final drive ratio again, and to put in sway bar stiffnesses. Like, oh my god, I've done so much here. But oh my god, I love this car so much. And to be honest, I think this thing could do with like a little bit less rear sway bar. It will make it a little bit more controllable putting that power down because the burnouts you do are just hellacious. They are so bad, but 
It's worth it. Oh, for how beautiful this car is. I do love it. I wish automation had a, um, what do you call it? Uh, a livery painter as opposed to trying to put on stickers. Now I do get why there's uh, stickers as opposed to a livery painter because this is an automation game car. And in automation, you can put stickers on and they'll work properly. Unfortunately, it's just when they get to BMNG, then they start to become super duper jank and like they clip through a lot more and all that sort of stuff. So automation devs, like, it'd be nice, but I mean, we don't need it, but it, it would be nice to have a livery painter. Oh my God, this is just so fun to drive. It also like in top end power, it's just absolutely destructive. So like driving along and then once you reach like around 9,000 RPM, this thing becomes completely undrivable because it just, it loses traction all the way into third gear. It is just absolutely bonkers. If you want to try this out, it will be up on the BeamNG repository. I hope you guys are liking the F1 series because currently this is my favorite. I'm just going to quickly refresh it and just take a look. Oh man. That is just so gorgeous. Apart from the clipping through stickers sort of thing. I love it. I love it so, so much. Now also the mod body will be available in automation on the uh, Steam Workshop. It will be tweaked a little bit. There are a few uh, changes I have made already. Um, morphing will come in the future, but for now, I hope you love it as is. I just wanna, I wanna make this black and white. You guys can enjoy a little bit of uh, black and white racing for now. Mm, goodbye.